Uh-oh. That's not good. How's it going y'all? We finally got a break in the weather so I figured it would be a good opportunity to give y'all an update on FDR-X7. Y'all definitely missed a lot. I've got a lot done on this car just kind of going through and knocking it out. I'm gonna get y'all caught up real quick. It looks totally different from last time y'all have seen it. I've got a lot of stuff done. I'm just gonna kind of walk through real quick and show y'all where we're at and what we got done and everything. Made some really good progress. But check it out real quick. As you guys could tell, like I said, we got the headlight assembly and everything put on. This is the radiator kit that I've been talking about, the uh, Sandberg. I gotta get the, uh, the filter for it. This is just like a little universal tank from Summit. The kit comes with one, but like I said, this, I bought this second hand, so um, my kit didn't come with that. So I just kinda picked one up from Summit and made like this little bracket to hold it, like a little strap. All that is is just a, a intercooler cl uh, pipe clamp that I kinda welded it to this little brace. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else. So we got the, the wiring harness laid in the car. Um, let's see, got the brake system and everything done. Like I said, I was running like just a Nissan uh, 350Z one because it's what I had and the factory one was messed up. But we got the lines and everything hooked back up. Um, I got uh, roll control back here, but I have one of my flares is leaking, so I have to take that off and reflare it picked up these little original Mazda clamps because of course you know just wanted to look factory and look neat it's a nice little touch I think just hold the line there um, of course this car you know this whole engine bay caught fire so all that little stuff like that got burned up so the wiring's still a mess but like I have this little relay panel which I'm gonna you know mount down here and make it a little bit neater and you know I have like some wire nuts just temporary connections so I know the connections are solid and you know once I get this mounted I can cut them to length and solder and heat shrink and make it actually look nice let's get the key out of this thing real quick uh, kind of change the battery location and put it behind the passenger seat um, because in my rear cubby back there I'm going to put both the nitrous bottles, mainly just because it looks cool. Oh yeah, got the rear bumper on, the tail lights on, running lights, all that stuff, hatch in the glass, this thing looking awesome. So, really pumped about that. Yeah, I was going to put one of the, you know, just one nitrous bottle in the battery back here, but I don't know. I just think it looks cooler with the two bottles. Um, I will be getting like some, you know, newer ones. These are just ones I have laying around. So I was kind of throwing it back there for mock up and all that good stuff. But of course, like I said, the wiring harness is still loose. And because this is just a factory harness that I've kind of hacked up and moved stuff around as I wanted it. Like I said, really can't afford to build one from scratch right now. But we got the pedal and the column and all that, or the pedals and the column and all that stuff in here. Um, I know it looks like a mess, but I have like this little temporary, you know, fuse panel and you know, the, the power switch down here. That's, you know, Nothing on this car is ever going to be correct and done the right way. That costs money, and I don't have it. So, but for the most part, it's coming along pretty good. Let's see, everything's working, which is a miracle because this harness is a nightmare. And just putting like little trim pieces and stuff back on, which is a good thing because this stuff is stored like all over the place. It's a miracle I found half of it. pop-ups work I 
all the running lights which you're probably not going to be able to see because it's in the middle of the day <laughs> I absolutely love those tail lights I'm actually glad I found a pretty decent deal on these just because it had this one little bad spot which I don't care about because you're never going to see that I mean you'll see it but it's, it's not going to bug me but the paint turned out pretty good on the bumper and the rest of the part of the, you know the rest of the car like the all the other stuff I just have to like the hatch and kind of look and see I think the paint turned out pretty good all things considered just gonna have to like wet sand and buff the rest of the car but I don't think it turned out too bad got everything painted and cleaned up I don't know if you remembered from like the last video just how rough and rusty all this stuff was um, like I said it's just it's raw metal from the factory so um, the car most of these parts come out of the front windshield was like caved in so you know it was in the elements and everything so yeah, it's coming along pretty good I'm stoked Maybe one day we'll get some nice custom bash bars. But I just painted this for like, cause it's fiberglass and I guess just from sitting out in the elements and stuff like that, it was falling apart. If you like looked at this thing, you would itch for a year. It was ridiculous. But we got it running. Now that I said that, probably not gonna start, but we'll give it a shot. Let's see what happens. Turn the key on. A little rough on the start up. But yeah, just want to get y'all caught up real quick. Like I said, I know I'm not really going into detail when I'm putting this thing together. Um, mainly because I don't think anyone really cares. It's basically just so I can kind of keep up with the, the progress of this car. I mean, I wish I started like way, way earlier. Because um, this thing was in pretty rough shape. Um, if you've watched the end of the videos, on a lot of them with the RX-7s, you'll see what they look like when I, when I actually got them. Um, this thing was a mess. Like it was a bare shell. There was nothing on this car, nothing in this car. It had like some like, you know, clapped out suspension just so it would like roll, but there wasn't much to it. Like there was nothing, no axles, no diff, no, no wiring, no brake lines, no anything. I mean, this thing was a bare, bare, bare shell. So it's a lot of work, a lot of time and effort, money and everything to get this car to where it is right now. So, but yeah, just kind of want to keep track of like, the progress of this thing and you know for the people that are actually interested so you guys see where it's at but i'm really really happy might not look like it right now, but i'm super super happy uh, pretty much all we need is uh, some seats um, i need to figure out some kind of exhaust system and a steering wheel because i accidentally threw away or not throw away but as i took off the the scrap mustang um, the steering wheel was actually in that car, so the steering wheel's gone. It's unfortunate because that would have been something I wouldn't have to bolt right now, but oh well. Yeah, for the most part, that's it. Like I said, um, it's coming together pretty good. Like I said, I'm uh, hoping to get someone over here to help put the doors on because I'm like terrified that I'm gonna scratch this thing after painting it. <laughs> so get a friend to help put the doors on, and then we put the fenders on, and 
hood and front bumper. I cannot wait to show you guys the front bumper. Of course, you know, like I said, I think I've already told y'all. Like I said, we got the the uh, 99 spec front end for this thing. Really pumped on that. Like I said, I've always wanted that. Like this this engine setup, which I know like a lot of people probably. I know people don't like the LS in the in the RX-7, but it would have cost a million dollars and like 12 cents to put a rotary back in this thing. <laughs> so it would just would have, been, for me, it was not, not even um, a thought because this would just been so much money. I think I paid like 3,500 bucks, like total for this full drivetrain. Engine, transmission, um, so wiring harness all accessories but to go back rotary and have to like source up all that stuff it would have it would have cost uh, a lot and like i had an engine that we got out of that the, the rx7 the fdrx7 that, that i bought that was crashed but i ended up putting that engine in the montego rx7 so yeah things work out the way they work out but i found the, the crash car before i bought the ls stuff that i might have left this thing rotary but it didn't work out that way i bought the engine you know, bought the shell, bought the engine, started sourcing parts, and then I found that crash car. So it is what it is. <laughs> I'm pumped about that. Like I said, I've all, I've all used to be one of those guys. Like I never wanted to see an, an LS and an RX-7, but it has its place. It's more affordable, you know, definitely more reliable. If you wouldn't believe that or not, that's totally up to you. But it's definitely more cost friendly. So. Yeah, I guess that's enough of me rambling. Like I said, I just wanted to kind of give you all a quick update. Um, the weather's actually nice. We've got a lot of bad weather here recently, so haven't been able to do much as far as going out and recording or, you know, actually working on the car. As you see, it's dirt floor, so when it rains, I mean, this just turns into a swamp and I can't do anything, so. But anyway, I guess that's enough of me rambling. I appreciate you guys for watching it. I'm gonna get out of here. It's nice and, uh, I haven't rode my bike in a very, very long time, so I'm actually going to go put some miles on that. But anyway, appreciate you guys watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.